Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. Um, I hope you're having a great week so far. In this chat, we're gonna talk about the last video of the challenge as far as the designs go. Um, we do have one bonus video next week about quilting the borders, but this week we're gonna talk about clamshells and quilting along those curves and how to fill in the space and some variations. Of course, I'm gonna answer your questions. There have been a lot of great questions chatting right before the video went live, so I've got those written down. I'll also peek back in and see what's being said on the chat after I'm done with the pictures and, and hopefully get any of those questions answered that you have. I'll announce the next giveaway. I will tell the winner of last week's giveaway and some other fun stuff. So definitely lots of things to pack into a half an hour. But first, let's go over the clamshells designs and let's see some different tips or tweaks that might help you with those. Okay, so for the first time, we're working with a curvy ruler. Now, I know with the wavy ruler, we were talking about the point of contact changing along the ruler, but now that point of contact is becoming more extreme, right? So that point of contact is gonna go all the way from the one side to the bottom to the next side. And so that's why this video is the last one of the challenge. It was not the first one because it's probably the most difficult thing. If you've been quilting along it and you notice that it kind of goes off track, that's just because we're not paying attention to that point of contact and just kind of taking your time and keeping it into the ruler. So when we take that clamshell shape though, or that curvy shape, we're basically quilting a half of a circle. And circles are something that are really hard to freehand or quilt consistently, at least for me. Um, with, any, with any quilting design, we want it to be you know, symmetrical and it's really hard to sustain that curve over, you know, freehand. So I like to use clamshell rulers anytime I wanna get that nice circle shape. So here we have the basic clamshell design, right? Where we, we're quilting rows of arcs and we're stacking them on top of each other. Now, if you downloaded the um, quilting diagrams, that's probably gonna be very helpful because what we're doing is we're quilting rows, but we're offsetting or we're flipping around or we're overlapping. It's gonna help you keep track of the different designs. So. In this particular one, this is our clamshell. I wanna talk a second about how we approach the quilt. So this is something I didn't really get into in the tutorial, but when you're quilting on your sewing machine, you have the choice to quilt all your clamshells. And then if you wanna add orange peels, come back and add your orange peels. You also have the opportunity to quilt each row. If you wanna add the orange peels or the upside down shape, you can do that as you go. It really depends on your preferences. Now, I would say if you find holding the ruler one direction is more comfortable for you, I would quilt all of them that way and then come back and do the rest, turn the quilt and do the rest the same way. So on a sewing machine, you have a little bit more freedom to kind of change that orientation. On a long arm, you don't. Not, it's not as easy to change the orientation of the quilt, obviously. So on the long arm, I'm definitely gonna handle all that quilting as I work my way down. So if I'm doing the first row and then adding my orange peels, I'm gonna do that and work my way down the area. But have you noticed these clamshells kind of stack on top of each other? That means if I'm quilting on my long arm from the top down, I'll actually quilt them upside down. So I'll start here and kind of stack them that way. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. It's just thinking about the different ways you approach that area, depending on what machine you're working on. Now, let's say you have the bigger ruler, you have the um, Shelly ruler or whatever, and you want the quilting to be a little bit more dense. That's definitely where the orange peels come into play. So adding that next line of quilting that's going the opposite direction and offset is gonna create denser quilting. This is also gonna be a great way to hide any lines that aren't perfect, right? We've seen this a lot during the challenge. If you make a mistake, how do you handle it? You keep making more mistakes around it till it goes away. So if I quilt my first row and I'm like, uh, no, I'll add some more orange peels and, and keep that quilting to help, you know, kind of help hide it. So this is definitely for something that's gonna be more dense or where I want more detail in the quilting. Now the thing to remember though with orange peels and really clamshells too, when you're this close to it, you're gonna see where the line is off a little bit or where it's not quite right. But when you step back, your eyes kind of turn that whole design into a pattern and it's gonna look fine. Now I'm using contrasting thread so that you can see what I'm doing. You're probably gonna to wanna to use matching thread color so that you don't have to deal with that. All right, so then we also talked about real briefly adding echoes. So the reason I like to do echoes is maybe I want a little more detail in the quilting or maybe I find it easier to quilt in a certain direction. Okay, so if I find that I can quilt clamshells great from left to right, I can do the clamshells left to right and then the direction that I'm not comfortable in, the right to left, I can just do some echo lines. 
right? Because I'm just kind of doing a little bit less. I don't have to think about lining it up quite as much. So when you're working with any design, knowing what your preferences are or what you're comfortable with and using the quilting to make it easier on you will really be helpful. So in this particular instance, I like to quilt one way, so I do the hardest part in, my, in the way that's easier, and then I do the easier part on the way that's harder. If that doesn't make sense, then just pretend I didn't say anything. Um, but echoing is definitely going to help, that, help with that. It's also gonna kinda draw attention to the uh, individual clamshells, not as much as the overall texture. So in this particular example, um, I'm adding just a little bit more of that spacing. Remember, echoing is like a frame or kind of parentheses that highlights what it's around. Now, what's fun about this sample is that you don't have to stick with one kind of clamshell over the whole area. I think it's great to switch it up as you're going, especially if you start following a routine. It can make a really cool effect um, and you can really kind of have fun with it. You can add more echoes if you wanted. You could add, you know, as you can really play around with it and come up with a lot of variations. Now, one thing that I didn't really get a chance to talk about, if you look at this picture at the top of my area, if you're filling in a defined area with your clamshells, you might find that you get to the end and you don't have quite enough for a whole row. If that's the case, we're just gonna move the ruler down a bit and shrink them up a little bit, like we've already done with the arcs and the Taj and the motifs. So that top, that top row is a little bit shorter because it, I wanted it to fill in that area. I could have also used echoing to fill it in. Like if it's, you know, just a little bit off, I could add some more echo lines. Or I could have put some filler of any kind in there, right? I could have put some swirls or really anything I want. The trick to remember is that I just don't wanna leave a gap in the quilting. As long as everything is filled in, it's gonna look fine. So whether you add your arcs or whether you make them shorter, doesn't matter. Okay, so if you've had a chance to try any of the quilting, I hope that you tried this one. Uh, combining the clamshells with a different ruler is such a fun way to add a little pop of texture to it. Um, it's also great because I don't have to worry about connecting it somewhere down the line, right? So if I'm working on my long arm and I just wanna put a little cluster in here because I don't wanna have to try to figure out how to make them match up, this is gonna be really helpful. Or maybe I don't wanna to commit to doing clamshells over the whole quilt because I'm still trying to get the hang of using this ruler. So doing them in sections will make it just a little easier. And I think it's really fun and whimsical. Now, this might not be for every quilt, but definitely for more novelty quilts, um, fun, you know, quilts that are more, uh, more fun, I guess that's not what I really wanna say, but something like that. So it, it could add a really, really neat texture. Now the trick to that, if you remember, is to stack them on top of each other, I'm gonna backtrack along the previously quilted clamshell. Now, when we're filling in a specifically defined area that's like a, a rectangle, um, we'll, sometimes we'll travel along the edge of the area to get to the next one. But here, we're not doing that, we're traveling right back along the one we quilted. And this is gonna be fine because I'm gonna leave that ruler in place, quilt along, and then come right back up. Now, if your ruler doesn't have those reference lines, like the middle, or the bottom, you can definitely mark those out. That's gonna make your life a lot easier. Whether you use like glow line tape or washi tape, or sometimes I've used a Sharpie just to kind of mark the line. You wanna keep that repositioning point consistent and it's gonna make that cool stacked effect. And whether you make a stack of orange peels, you add in a few, just add in one or two, uh, it's, it's a really neat thing to do. And I, I think it's just something that looks um, more difficult than it really is. Now, when I'm quilting on both sides of a section though, that can be tricky if I'm doing those wavy lines. So if you notice throughout all of this sample, I have my sections, there really isn't one, yeah, there really isn't one wavy line that goes from one edge to the other. So the whole idea here is I'm using those clamshells to break up that space and make it easier to manage. So if you're quilting with your wavy ruler and you're having trouble with the repositioning or you're like, I want to practice wavy rulers, but I don't want to do it over this whole big area. Throwing in those sections or those chunks will break it up and make it easier to manage. Again, when it comes to quilting those waves, the most important thing is that you fill in the whole area. Whether they line up perfectly or not, it's going to be nice and dense and it's going to make that unquilted clamshell pop out. So try not to worry too much about that. You can also use free motion quilting, which for me is probably what I would do. Um, having a little bit of ruler work and a little free motion quilting, I like to change it up, keep me from getting too bored. So you can definitely use it to break up bigger areas, make it easier on yourself, especially if you're on your sewing machine, working on a big quilt, it's gonna make it make life a lot easier for you. All right, so we, I showed real quickly a few variations. 
When it comes to changing up the design, think about direction, upside down or right side up, and think about offset, whether it's an echo or it's offset. So in the lighter blue strip, I showed just real quick with Archie how that's quilted in four different sections, or let's call them passes. And I'm simply quilting one row and then offsetting it and then doing the same on the other side. And so the more I do, the more intricate that design is gonna be. Now this is definitely not something I would do over the whole quilt, that would take forever, but in a strip or a sashing or in an area that you want just a little bit more quilting, it's gonna create a neat, create a neat effect. Now the thing is, try not to stress so much about the lines lining up perfectly because you know it kind of creates this other design inside of it. Just get it as close as you can and move on. Now in the darker blue, we can see that I have quilted my clamshells and then I offset and quilted right on top of it. So basically what I did with the Archie ruler, just quilting it right on top of each other. This is nice if I don't want to change direction of the ruler. Now I designed Shelly so that it would, you know, quilt the same arc on either side, no matter which side of your foot you worked on. But if you don't have that and you don't want to flip your ruler over, maybe you're on the long arm and it's tricky to hold it that way. This is a variation that will make that a little bit easier. So still getting somewhat of that clamshell look or definitely the clamshell look a little bit of the um, orange peel, not quite exactly, but definitely making it easy. All right, so I almost, I almost put this in the video, but I said, no, I promise no more motifs. Um, this is an example of using the Shelly ruler or the, uh, any curve ruler to make a motif. So everything that we've learned so far, right, we're quilting it, rotating it around a center point. Um, just wanna show you, you can create motifs even with those, those shapes. And of course, that dense filler in the background really helps it pop. So just a fun variation there. Okay, so in this block, hopefully it made sense. I know it was kind of quick, but when you're quilting blocks or designs or parts of your quilt, you can combine the rulers to create some really interesting effects. And so in this particular block, I combined a lot of different rulers. I did the Shelly, a cutout ruler, the circle, an arc, and a straight edge. The idea is just kind of play around with the rulers you have and create some fun designs. You'll never know what you come up with. Um, and this was a fun kind of like, okay, I'm going to quilt this block and, and move on. And since I quilted those curves, so if you see the lighter blue blocks in the blue box in the center, those curves that are going around it are actually helping me move from pedal to pedal to pedal so that I can quilt the whole thing without starting and stopping. So even though I'm using multiple rulers, I still want to do it as efficiently as possible, you know, because there's lots of quilts to do and not quite enough time for them. Another thing I didn't get a chance to show is in that dark blue border. So those um, clamshells or those curves can make a really neat scalloped design. Uh, this could be for a cute feminine block, uh, smaller sashing. And I've just quilted on two sides because, you know, I just didn't want to mess with the other corners. And so you can use those, those scallops in a lot of different ways er, or the curvy rulers in a lot of different ways. So here is a cute little border design. And this is kind of a last minute picture I threw in there. Really, a clamshell technically is half of, a, half of a circle, even though you don't have to have exactly that shape. But if you have half a circle, you can create a full circle. So if you wanna create these circles just by quilting around it and flipping it over and continuing on, it can be a really neat um, way to divide up your area and fill it in. So just an option there. Not one I use a whole lot because I don't, you know, that just seems kind of a pain, but you know. Um, on the top of this picture, we have using um, Shelly to do that same design I did with Archie. So a little bit more dense, creating that secondary effect. But in the bottom picture, you don't have to orange peel on every single row. So the first row, I quilted my arcs, and I quilted my orange peels, but on the second row, I just quilted the clamshells. So I get this kind of fun little like flower shape, which I could come in later and fill in with some different designs. Or maybe it's an adorable border design, uh, or maybe I just want to uh, only do one row of orange peels because it's taking forever and I'm, I'm over it. So sometimes that can be the case as well. So you can definitely um, change up how you actually quilt it. And I know I showed that example earlier, but you can add orange peels on every other row. You can add a couple, add it in here, or there, or wherever. Really kind of uh, have fun with it. And the last picture I have is just, I was playing around with the Shelly ruler and trying to see some different designs. It makes an adorable little leaf shape if you want to quilt that, if maybe you're quilting um, a border design like that. 
or using backtracking to create the viney uh, design that's on the left. And there I'm just quilting half the arc, right? So half the arc, backtracking, repositioning, and doing the same. So it kind of looks like you have clamshells that are hidden behind um, the area, and it's just an easy way to, to do that. This would be really helpful if you're not comfortable going around the whole ruler because you're only going up half of it. So you can definitely um, not use the whole ruler if you're having trouble with that. So hopefully those pictures help out, make a little bit more sense. Um, I know that quilting clamshells can be frustrating. In fact, one of the questions was, or one of the comments was that some people found this one difficult. And like I said, that's why it's at the end of the challenge and not the beginning. I promise just practicing a little bit will really help you, um, especially if you're having trouble going around that curve, right? You're having trouble maintaining that point of contact. Just keep doing it. I promise it'll get easier. I promise. It just takes a little bit of practice. And then you can go ahead and switch it around and offset it. Maybe in the beginning, just quilting around, you know, doing the first direction. Learn that and then try the other direction and quilt your orange peels. Sometimes we're trying too many different things at once and it can be really overwhelming. Okay, so a couple questions that were in the live chat. Um, I love getting on there and, and you know chatting with everybody and um, seeing some questions because usually if they're asking it, it means that some of you might be thinking the same thing. Um, one cute little question was, where does Sid get his name? So all my rulers have names. Um, it was my way of trying to make it less intimidating, right? You can't be nervous around Slim. And you know, Elvira is your, the fun friend that's gonna help you make some curves. Sid actually gets his name from stitching in the ditch. So Sid, S-I-D, is something back in, back in the day when I started um, machine quilting, there was no social media, so we had Yahoo forums. Does anybody remember that? Anyway, that was the abbreviation you would use for stitching in the ditch. So like, as in help, I'm Sid, and it looks horrible. <laughs> but that's where um, Sid gets his name. Some people noticed, especially around the curve ruler, that when they were going around that curve, they would get a squeaking sound. And that, ha that happens to me sometimes too. While I'm not 100% sure what it is, I'm sure, pretty sure that it's the vibration of the ruler on the foot. So that means that as the foot's moving along, I think the ruler's wiggling just a bit. And sometimes that squeaking can be pretty pronounced. I know on my long arm, sometimes I get that sound. That usually means it's not being held in place. It could also mean that your fingers aren't near enough the edge, near enough to the edge to hold it down. Now, we don't want your fingers so close, right, that they're in the way, but you definitely wanna have the most of your support close to the edge you're quilting. So let's say you're quilting along um, the curve ruler. My fingers are gonna be right up along that curve, but I still wanna kind of make sure that it's close to where I'm at. So I'm kinda of not really rotating my hand, but kind of adjusting the pressure depending on where it is. Again, that's something that you can't really teach because it doesn't make any sense, you know, but just keeping that pressure where that foot is is gonna help keep it from squeaking. Or if it squeaks, it's fine. Another thing I've noticed, this wasn't um, mentioned, but this is something that I've noticed, is when I'm using a ruler, sometimes I'll get some residue on it for my long arm, like maybe it's rubbing it, and so I'll just kind of clean it off on my, my batting. So if you see that, I think it's normal. Uh, it's normal for me, I don't know if it's normal for everybody else. A great question that came up is, what if your clamshell ruler doesn't have the needle stop, right, like Shelly does? Well, the needle stop just makes it easier, right, because it just stops for me. Um, but if you don't have it, that's no problem. You're still going to quilt along it and stop when you hit the edge of the area. So if it's the seam of my block, if it's the previously quilted row, I'm going to stop at that point. So definitely do that. If your ruler is bigger than the area, again, you just wanna make sure your repositioning point is the same on both sides. So marking that out with a piece of tape will be really helpful, especially if you're doing them over a whole big area because you'll be repositioning it a lot and it will just make it a little bit easier. So good question. You definitely do not have to have um, the cutout or the needle stops. You just need a repositioning point that is the same on both sides that you can consistently use. That's it. Um, last week, there was a couple questions about the live chats. Some people were having trouble finding them, and I remember thinking, I don't know what's going on. So I went back in and found out that I had not been assigning them to a playlist. So now all the live chats from this challenge are on the same playlist on YouTube as this challenge. So now you should be easier to find all the previous live chats. So just like the tutorial videos, the live chats will stay up indefinitely so that you can, you know, pop back in if you want to um, see a tip or a helpful point. So. 
If you have trouble with that, you can definitely uh, send me a contact message through my website, but it should be right there on YouTube. Okay, uh, Jennifer had a great point. She's struggling with stopping smoothly at that target point. So unfortunately, it's just gonna take practice. I know, like I hate saying it, but it's true, right? So looking ahead of where you're at will be helpful. Much like driving a car, I'm not gonna look right at the end of the hood, I'm gonna look on down the road. Now that can be scary, right? When you're trying to keep your fingers in the point of contact, that's why it takes a little practice so you can do all these things at the same time. Looking ahead will help you anticipate where you're stopping and then that will, that will help. Um, it will become second nature after a while, much like our handwriting or, or things that we do without really thinking about it. A uh, funny point about that is my long arm at home is the Handy Quilter Avante. And so it doesn't have a as powerful motor as like the, the Amara. And so I will, I've gotten used to stopping um, a little bit sooner, like right before the end point, because I know it takes a second to do that. But here in the studio, I have an Amara. And so it's different. It stops a lot faster. <laughs> and so I've had to like train myself like, oh, wait, no, I need to wait till I get to that end. So even switching between machines can make that a little tricky. But again, it's just a little practice. It's like when you drive a car and you learn how exactly how touchy the brakes are, you know, same kind of thing. So hopefully um, that helps. I know it's not a lot I can offer, but looking ahead and just knowing where it's coming. Here's the thing though. If you're quilting the clamshell design over a whole quilt, by the time you get to the end, you'll be an expert at it. So try, try not to be um, too hard on yourself with that. All right, one last question that I wrote down and then I'll peek on over to the challenge and see how, if there are chat and see if there's any um, questions over there. A uh, question came up, can we still buy panels from earlier challenges? You can, especially the last two, well, last three counting this one. Some of the earlier challenges that didn't have a panel, some of that fabric is sold out, but I think there's a couple that we still have kits for. Um, the panels and the kits and the quilts just make it easier for you to jump right into quilting. They're definitely not required to quilt along. That's why I want it to be where you could just bring your fabric and your machine and, and start quilting. Um, but some of the earlier challenge panels are still available. So that's one of the benefits of producing them myself. Um, and then somebody commented that they really love the live chats because the tutorials seem kind of short and concise. And I do know that's the case and that's intentional. Um, I know that people's um, attention span, especially on YouTube, can be short. And so I think the word of wisdom that I've always read is to keep it, you know, within 12 to 15 minutes. That way people aren't getting bored and, and clicking away. So the live chats I knew would be helpful, especially for the rulers, because there's so much information about rulers, less answering questions. But when we were chatting before, um, I was thinking, these are really fun. We should just keep up the Thursday chats. And so I think that's what we're going to do. Um, and like next Thursday will be the day after the first Midnight Quilter episode. So maybe I can talk about quilting feathers, which is what I do in one of those. So I'm definitely going to keep the live chats up. Hopefully you'll join me for those. So let's see how everybody's doing. Um, hello, Nancy from San Antonio, Texas. Very fun. Okay, Cindy, good question. Cindy said, if you were to uh, quilt a small quilt of clamshells all over, where would I start? I would start along an edge and then work my way out. So whether it's the bottom or the top, I'm assuming on a sewing machine. Um, on a long arm, same thing, I would start on the edge. But I know, here's the question though, right? Um, what if you wanna start from the center? Because the center is usually the easiest place to start. Well, what I'll do is maybe mark out one line. I just need a registration line. And so marking out that registration line, or maybe my quilt has a seam across it. Maybe it's a jelly roll race quilt, which is the best because you have all those seams. Um, then you can start in that middle row and then come back and add to it. That will make it a little bit easier. Um, ultimately though, I like to work vertically when I'm working on my sewing machine. So my clamshell ruler always stays in the same hand. I think in the video tutorial, I can't remember, I think I demonstrated it horizontally because you can see it better with the camera. Um, but keeping it in one hand makes it a little quicker. So I probably would start wherever I can quilt vertically and just keep building off of it. Um, the trickiest part to that is if you start in the middle, in the next row you want it to kind of end up at the same spot. Um, it just takes a little bit of planning, but you could also add some filler or do something different in that area. So very good question. 
Um, let's see. Oh, good. I, I love that everybody wants to still do the chat. It's very fun. There, Paula, yes, there will be a bonus video for the borders and that will be on Monday. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of give you some design ideas for quilting those borders with your rulers. You might find that borders are a little bit easier to quilt because it's a smaller defined section. Um, if you're practicing with your rulers on just a piece of fabric, sometimes not having those defined areas can make it a little overwhelming. So having that defined area will really help help you do that. Um, Mary Jean, I always seem to be searching for the live chats. What's the easiest way to find you? Is it on Facebook and YouTube or just YouTube? It's on YouTube. So the live chats are always on YouTube. And then that's because anybody can get them even if they're not on Facebook. And so if you go to my YouTube channel, if you subscribe, it'll send you a notification when the live chat is scheduled or when it goes live. Um, but you can also go to my website, quiltingismytherapy.com, and there's a free motion challenge tab, and that's where you'll find all the previous challenges. I have links to the weekly videos, and I have some of the links to the um, live chats there too. So YouTube is where it's all held, but you can find um, some of that information all kind of congregated easier over on my website. We do have the Facebook group, um, the Free Motion Challenge Facebook group. That's a great resource to share pictures and ask questions and stuff, but that's not really where the live chats are. They're all on YouTube. So, um, okay, good question. I was I have on my notes talking about upcoming things. Birthday party on Saturday. So my quilt shop is turning five. It's like practically out of toddlerhood, right? It's like a child. Um, and so we're gonna have a virtual birthday party and I'm gonna be doing uh, live demos every hour. Plus I will be showing um, the Midnight Quilter quilts. So sneak peek before the Midnight Quilter actually launches on Wednesday. It is on Facebook. So this is gonna be on the shop's Facebook page. So quilting is my therapy shop. Um, there's a link to it in the description box so you can check it out there. And so basically every hour, 9.05, cause you know, five years, 10.05, 11.05, I'll go live, do a little demo about something, and then show the quilt and then have a flash sale. So anyway, it's gonna be a fun time. It's just, you know, the world's different now and we're gonna celebrate the best way we can and it's gonna be virtually. I'll be at the shop and we'll be um, just having a great time celebrating five years because, you know, it's, I think it's hard for any retail business but to survive a pandemic and all the things, I'm just very fortunate to have great customers. So that's gonna be a fun time. Also, um, Build a Quilt is starting up. Remember I talked about that I think last week, it's our block of the month. In fact, I was giving away an oops kit from that. That was a panel with all the fabrics and Carrie L1. I've already emailed Carrie and let her know, or him or her, I think it's a girl, Carrie, um, that they won the panel. That's gonna be the same giveaway for the next week. So there's a link in the description box to join that or to um, do the giveaway. And um, if you think about it, if you wanna give this video a thumbs up or share it, that really helps get the word out there. I do appreciate it. Um, just gonna look through any questions. Addie, the Midnight Quilt Show is no longer, but the Midnight Quilter, I know I make it kind of confusing, don't I? The Midnight Quilter will be on my YouTube channel and that starts on Wednesday. Super excited, cannot wait for you to see it. Um, it's gonna be great. Okay, um, sorry, it's like, whew, all the questions. I wanna make sure I got everything I think we got it all so next week we'll be back with the borders we'll talk about breaking it up into chunks show you some design ideas and hopefully get you kind of inspired to do that and um, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about there's links in the description box so after the video or the live chat is over you can check that out and find all the links there and thank you so much I mean I hope that if you have started the challenge I know that not everybody has because you know life gets in the way, but I hope that if you've worked through a few of the videos that you're already seeing improvement. And I hope that no matter where you are on your quilting journey, that you'll be able to use rulers to do some different things maybe than what you even thought you could do. So definitely, um, definitely a lot of fun. And uh, will you be able to view the birthday party after the fact? I'm pretty sure the videos stay on my Facebook page. So yes, I think you will. So very good. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you have a great week. Um, well, I'll see you again on Wealth Come to the Live Party Saturday. If not, video will be out on Monday, and we'll do another live chat next Thursday where I'll wrap up, you know, talk about the borders, answer your questions, and also talk about the Midnight Quilter. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great, great week. Happy quilting.